Hello, my name is Livio Bolzen. I'm one of the co-founders of Codemon. So today I'm going to go over the HTML beginner lessons. And these are the first lessons that most educators and most students do first. This is going over basic web pages uh, using emojis as kind of that on-ramp. So once the student is logged into their account, um, and they're all linked to your teacher dashboard, you can do that by either creating uh, the usernames for them, or you can have the students create their own usernames uh, and then enroll in your class through the, the settings tab here. Um, so once you've done all that, um, the students should go to learn to code. Um, and right here in the beginning, beginner section, we have HTML, the CSS, the JS, the combo lessons, which combine HTML and CSS, um, and then double JS, which are uh, more complex, a little bit harder uh, JS lessons with a similar structure. So all the, the foregoing tutorials here um, will all start on this page, uh, and we'll kind of show you uh, where we are. Uh, there's a percentage of where the student is uh, in their progress. Um, so I've been doing a couple of tutorials, so I have been doing a couple of lessons. So now I'm going to jump into the first HTML lesson. So the first HTML lesson goes over the uh, HTML opening and HTML closing tag. And we represent the HTML tag, in this case, uh, with a stoplight. And we do that because you can think of it as the stop and the start of the document. So all HTML pages have a start with an HTML opening. Uh, tag and all documents have an end with an HTML closing tag. So that's why we use the stoplight. And then in between, everything else will go. And that's why we use this uh, emoji to represent uh, the HTML tag. So over, over here, you will also see uh, information about uh, each tag uh, that we represent. Um, and on this computer screen, once you click on it, there will be a live display that I'll go over. It. We also have, on all of our lessons, either a light bulb or a green dot. So this green dot links to the teacher dashboard um, inside of the class, and there is a status, a status circle. So if the student clicks on this, and you can let all the students know, this light will turn red, which means they need help. So inside the teacher dashboard, your status light will change very quickly to red. You can also change this status light back to green um, if you would like in the teacher dashboard. So once, once you've done that, uh, the status is they need help, and then you can walk around. You can either use a tablet or your laptop to kind of easily walk around and, and monitor students. Uh, we also have a couple different lights that mean they're either on lessons or they're on the playground area and so on. So once we've done that, we are now going to add some HTML tags. So we usually add the HTML opening tag to the first line and the HTML closing tag to the bottom. So we can also type stuff in between. Them. So hello. So this will also help kids get kids typing as the typing proficiency is not always uh, super good in the younger grade. So we can also see our live display over here. And as we type more, it'll just keep kind of adding uh, the more text to the live display. You can also show the code behind, uh, which is, like I said, the HTML opening tag and the HTML closing tag. We also have a trash can and a reset. This will reset the document to the very start of the lesson. So if a kid gets confused or really can't figure it out, uh, they can use this to reset it. Uh, the trash can is if they accidentally add the wrong emoji, they can delete that over here. So now we're going to run the document, and now we can view the live display. So here we can see this is what we wrote. Hello, hello, hello. And over here is the HTML opening and closing tag again. Um, this is to kind of start helping the students understand uh, that all the documents like this uh, stoplight really have a different meaning in, in the background. And this will help them later on understand uh, in our HTML intermediate and expert lesson uh, what is e going on more easily. So now I'm going to start going through the lessons a little bit quicker and, uh, and kind of go over the rest of the concepts. So uh, we have a handful of checkpoints uh, between multiple lessons. 
Um, so once the student sees one of these checkpoints, they should answer it to the best of their ability. And once they've done that, they can submit their answer. So after that, uh, we're going to go on to the uh, HTML um, head tag and title tag. So these are represented by a panda head and a turtle tag, or a, a T tag, uh, which in this case is turtle. So we can see that we have a stop, we need two stoplights, two panda heads, and two turtles. So in many cases, the students will add panda head and the turtles, but they'll forget the second panda head, which is totally okay. So if they do that and they run the code and, it, and it's incorrect, it'll, it'll let them know, and it'll also show them a hint or image below here, which in this case shows them the answer. So then they can try again and add the other panda head. They can even change this to be something else, like school is awesome. And once they have done this, they can run the code again, and they, oh, they got it correct, and now they can see the code behind it. So now they can see school is awesome at the top of the document, and over here you can see uh, the header and the title. So the title can be explained, or the head tag can be explained as a little uh, tab in uh, every web page that, in this case, at the top you'll see it says code emoji, lesson two, head tag. On many websites, this will say YouTube or other things. So now we are going to go over lesson three. So after the students have completed all these lessons, uh, we do have a little quiz that they can do. This is a paper printout quiz um, that we have um, inside the resource tab of the teacher dashboard. Um, and we also have uh, vocabulary cards at the bottom of that that you can print out. Um, so these are some resources that. Uh, I would suggest using. Our team is also starting to work on uh, some online uh, assessments, uh, tests, and so on that will be coming out. So now we're going to add the body tag, and the body tag is everything goes in between the body. So this will be pictures, text, everything. All documents have this basic structure we have here with an HTML opening tag, a head tag, a title tag closing tag, a body tag, and a closing body tag, and a closing HTML tag. So all documents that are in HTML will have this, this basic structure. So we can see behind the scenes here um, what is going on. So we're going to add some text. Hello. So once we've done that, over here we can see that text didn't show up. Why did that happen? Uh, that is because it is inside a body tag. But we can see that the text shows up over here. Um, and we can see it shows up. So now we're going to go over the uh, ice cream cone, which represents an HTML uh, header one tag. So this is also could represent a uh, header three or four or five tag based on the exact number that is given to it. Uh, and here we represent the swirls is uh, the different, because uh, the ice cream cone can have many different values. So we represent those with the swirls. So now we're going to change this to be anything we want. Awesome. So once we've done that, we can see we've added a large awesome over here. The H, H1 tag is a very large tag. So again, we can, we'll run our code. We got it right. Awesome. So all of them. We'll also have the hinter images like we had in earlier uh, lessons if the student gets the lesson wrong. So it's asked me a question, and I answered it. Those checkpoint quizzes are used to create customized lesson plans uh, for the student at the end um, to reinforce concepts that they were struggling with. So now we're going to go over the P tag, uh, which is represented, which is called a paragraph tag. Um, and this is just basic text will usually be used uh, with a P tag. So this will be just your basic text. Um, that doesn't need a, a big, large header. Um, it needs to be smaller in size. So we're going to add that. And you can see we pre-populate the text in between it. Um, but you can also change that. And the, uh, you'll still get the answer correct. So the span tag is very similar to the p tag. Um, it has a very similar structure, but it's it, it just used uh, a little bit differently sometimes in structured documents. But 
for our uses, it, it, it acts very similar. So we've added that, we've added a span, and we see that we have added uh, some text. As you can see, it, it functions very similar to this new tag. The span is a little bit older tag, um, but it has very similar uh, representation. So the block quotes tag um, is usually used to fill in quotes. So if you're talking about anything like books or movies or anything, you can use the block quotes. Um, it's a somatic tag, so it'll kind of show you, it's easier to read for screen readers and so on. Um, you could also do the functionality of the block quote tag with a P tag, and then you style it using CSS. But if you're not trying to style it using CSS, you can use uh, the block quote, and you can see it's blocked over here. So now we're going to use a strong tag. And a strong tag is, is represented like a bold text. So we can see right here, this is a strong tag. Sometimes you need to emphasize, so emphasize strong. So we use the muscles as muscles are strong. We can see we added the strong tag behind this. Now, after we run it, we will see that we have bolded the text here. You can kind of explain to students that if they want to make a bold statement, they can use the strong tag. So now we're going to go over italics. Uh, and if students don't understand what italics is, this might be a good time to kind of briefly explain um, what an italics is. Um, so the I tag is the italic tag. Um, we represent that by a large I, um, as that was the, the best way we thought we could kind of try to correlate the uh, italic meaning with, uh, with an emoji. So we've added italics here, and you can see the functionality behind. So this might be a good time to really explain some of those uh, different concepts depending on the age, age level. So this is the image tag. Uh, this is represented by a camera. Uh, we thought this was a good way to kind of bring in uh, some different emojis and explain some different uh, uh, concepts. So the image tag is really important. It's used on almost every website. Students have seen it a thousand times. Um, so we thought it was really important. So the image tag will add images. So some of the tags you'll need to also click on them to add different elements. So they'll flash until you click on them. So once you've clicked on it, you'll have different options here. And let's select the, in this case, the lion. So now we've added a lion over here, as you can see. We've also added it over here. So we've kind of taken away some of the things. So the students um, are adding the source by clicking on it. Uh, but you can explain to the source is the actual image behind the scenes um, what is going on so this source will be different based on the different image you select if it's a dog or a lion or so on so we've added a cute little lion here so this is a link tag so this is explaining like a link in a document so like the little uh, thing that you see that will link you to another page so in this case, we've set the links to not link off of uh, the lesson so the students don't accidentally go to the wrong page or, or get distracted. So this, again, has a flash flashing. Uh, the student needs to click on the first one uh, and select the option. So once they've done that, it'll sell, set a, a blank link that you can see here. Uh, so this link won't take the student anywhere. Uh, it'll keep them on the site uh, on this page specifically. But it's explaining uh, behind the scenes there's an href going on, and the href will link uh, using the a tag to another uh, web page. So now we're going to add some audio. So the audio tag is designed to add audio, in uh, this case, obviously. And this is a tag that is used quite a bit. Uh, if you ever see audio on a web page or sounds pre plain, uh, they'll be using an audio tag. So this is again one where we need to select some an element. Um, we click on it. Uh, we can select this. The sounds are a little, uh, a little goofy, um, but the students will get the overall uh, concept of what the tag is doing. So if you run the code, uh, you'll hear again. We'll have it uh, start auto playing uh, the sound. Uh, again, the audio tag has a source, um, and behind the scenes, uh, we've added an MP3. So now we're going to go on to the video tag. 
So the video tag will add videos. Um, these videos are um, were initially from YouTube, uh, but we generated them to MP4s um, so that the uh, schools don't block them. Um, all of the videos um, are safe for school, um, and we've we've watched them. Uh, if you find any issues, please let us know, and we'd be more than happy to change those. Uh, so who can resist watching a movie? Again, uh, the tag is one that needs elements added to it, um, which in this case will be the source. Um, so we can select any of these. We can select a cat one, which will add a fun cat video. So this will just quickly autoplay some cat, or this will not autoplay, but this will have some cat videos um, that the students can watch briefly or not based on uh, if you'd like. So in this case, we added an MP4. Um, that is a, uh, a good method to use in this case. So now we're going to add a Google Map. Uh, so this is a really cool tag. Um, we worked really hard on it um, to make it so simple but have such a, a big impact. So the, uh, the map tag, you can add a different country. So again, you can select the location. Um, this is a tag that is used, but, but we also kind of created ourselves. Um, so we're using Google Maps here in the background to, to generate the location. So sometimes it takes a second to load. You can see we selected the United States here, uh, and we're in the middle of the United States. So there's a pin. Uh, that pin is just random. Uh, this isn't relative to your location or anything. Uh, it's relative to the uh, just America. Um, so that if you base if you select another country, it'll it'll give you another result. So that's kind of a fun way to explain about a couple different countries, maybe, and also explain a cool tag. So we're almost to the end here. Um, so this tag is the break tag. Um, this creates a break in the uh, text. Uh, so if you see, if we add two P tags together, the text will just look like right next to each other. It won't break it. So we use a broken heart because um, we thought that was kind of a you know symbolic way to uh, explain uh, the break of a document. Uh, again, it's, it's all thinking about things that can easily be understood um, in kind of that image image-based world. Uh, so we can see here that this is break. We all had a heartbreak, and it creates separation and breaks between like likes of text. So this is very, you know, of friends. So you can see that we have just uh, broken the two spans apart here. So if we don't have the, the break tag, these will be next to each other. So you can explain if you want to break up text, um, you use that tag. So divs are used uh, the most in any HTML, CSS, and in any web development. So the divs are a little bit more of a complex concept, um, but they're used widely. So a div is just uh, used to break up uh, different portions. So in this case, you can see we're going to add a div there, a div there. We're going to add another div and another div. So we've added two divs here. Um, and you can see we've broken up this a little bit. Uh, as you can see, it clustered the first uh, two span tags and didn't cluster the second. So this is the last lesson uh, that the students have in our HTML beginner lesson. This is a unordered list and a ordered list, or a, just a list. So we are going to add our unordered list. And we're gonna or and then we're gonna add our list in between that. So we can see we got that correct, and this created a bullet point. Uh, the students can in the playground create more of these. Um, you can also go over the difference between an ordered list and an unordered list um, a little in a little bit uh, deeper. So this has been just a quick kind of run through on some of the different concepts. Um, we also have vocabulary uh, and a quick quiz that the students can do um, that you can print out and pass out. Those also have answer keys. All the students' uh, progress has now been tracked in your teacher dashboard that you can review later uh, to keep up with which students are working and which students are not. So we're going to have one last checkpoint quiz here. After that, uh, these have all been put together and to create an automatic lesson plan for the student. Um, and now the student either has the option um, to either go and build something on their own and save it, 
um, or they can go back to the dashboard. Uh, once they went back to the dashboard, they'll go here and then they can go on and view other lessons. You can also see that the customized lesson plan has been unlocked. Uh, this will go over concepts that the student might be struggling on uh, so that they can do better. So now uh, this is the end of our first uh, tutorial. Um, in the next tutorial, I'm going to go over the HTML uh, CSS uh, lessons, which is the CSS beginner lesson. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope you enjoy.